I hated booking a show. Like just a, it was just three bands, pay five dollars, come see the show. Yeah. I liked band, shows having names, having themes, have even if they were made up, even if they were silly, even if they were worthless, right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, gentlemen auction house and gentlemen callers playing the battle of the gentlemen. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. we had like a gentleman's cocktail on special. You know, it was just about doing something cool and kind of getting people together and. Um, the next thing was this thing called the Indie Rock Ice Cream Social. First two of them did over 350 people. And it was like, let, let, let's get ice cream and make it free. We'll just make Sundays for everybody. And let's have really cool bands. And so now we'll have people with a beer in one hand, ice cream Sunday in the other, all standing up against the stage. And, and it worked. And it was really cool. And then we had um, an undercover weekend. Two nights, five local bands a night, 30 minute sets, like short and sweet and have them do this like sort of secret tribute set. And so we broke the secret the day before the RFT ran like, you know, the, the leak, they leaked the secret the day before. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I want people to bond so much with these bands over what they cover for them to, for, for people in the audience to want to go see them immediately as themselves. I want them to like, to, to get the connection of why should I like these guys mm-hmm. by this night? And it was so cool because the first year, Annie from the RFT, the music editor came up to me and just said like, about Fatback being the car, she's like, I can't wait to see them be Fatback. I just can't wait. Those kind of things were what kept me going in doing shows was because that brought out the best out of both parties, the fans and the bands, Mm -hmm. you know? The whole thing I wanted where you would bond with the bands over who they covered, people were bonding with each other over oh my god you like the descendants and like oh my god you like fleetwood mac like Mm -hmm. it was just this really neat like we all had the same roots we're all you know you look different than me but we're all the same kind of thing Mm -hmm. it's just it's just been super cool to do and so like at this point i don't have a reason to book shows anymore i don't have a band i don't have a club you know i had that for a while um but i do this show (laughs) Because it's special, it's something. But I think a lot of people who are passive about all that stuff, who just come to shows, who just like music, whatever, don't realize, is that like these venues, these tours, these bands, even don't happen without cultivation, right? True. And and like it's a chicken or the egg kind of scenario, right? Um, you know, you look at a you look at a city like New York, and people say like, oh, they're so lucky. They get all the tours, they get all the shows, they get whatever. Well, when you really think about it, like they're big enough of a city to have enough cool people who are willing to stick it out and willing to, to build new clubs, who are willing to like do daring things with venues, right? Mm-hmm. And St. Louis, you know, um, I think one of the other driving forces was realizing that like we had sort of outlived the era that had Mississippi Nights, that had the Galaxy, that had the side door, that had the Rocket Bar, that had these places doing that for us. Those places all disappeared, right? And all of a sudden, it wasn't that bands were skipping us, they had nowhere to go, mm-hmm. right? They, like those bands had no contacts here, they had no venues to play here, they, had, they did not have the things that they needed to come play our city. It wasn't that our city was being overlooked, mm-hmm. our city wasn't providing. Sure. And so like, the double-edged sword with that is that we can provide the venue, we can provide the space, we can provide the ideation if we worked hard enough and if we personally lost enough money, right, doing this over and over again and kind of not relenting at failure, right, that it would work out. I mean, you look at our mid-size, small and mid-sized venues and they're banging every night. Mm-hmm. You know, it's great. It's great to see people out all the time. and there's sort of this like misunderstanding about what it takes to get there. You know, it's, it's not this sort of like, are we cool or not in right. St. Louis? It's like, are there people who are willing to work that hard and to persevere to get that to happen?